Game Maker is an event-driven game engine. To think of an event, think of something that could happen. And let's start with something in real life. Imagine someone knocks on your front door. That is an event. And once an event has occurred, you must decide how to respond to it. In the case of the door, you could answer it, you could ignore it, or yell for someone else to go get it. And when we begin talking about events in Game Maker, you can think about them in a very similar way. Game Maker has many different events, and we'll cover the different kinds that there are. But if a player or an enemy is created, how do you respond to that? Do you fill up their health? Do you warp them around the room? What happens when an enemy is destroyed? Does it give the player a score or does it just vanish immediately? You get to decide how the game responds. And you do that through two different types of events, recurring and triggered. A recurring event is something that happens again and again. This is great for things like tracking the health or the score. Then there are one-off events, things that don't happen very often, like colliding with an enemy or leaving a room. Whatever the case is, there's an event you can use to do that. So, an event in Game Maker is just like an event in real life. Someone knocks on your door, in real life, someone presses the enter key on the keyboard. Each one is an event that you can respond to. To make events in Game Maker, you'll first need an object, and you'll need to have the events window open. Now this window is open by default, but it can be closed. You can come down here and click on events to open it back up. To add an event, we click on this add event button. And this brings up the list of every single possible event that your object can have. Any object can have any one of these events, and any object can have as many events as you want. So you'll notice that there are arrows on some of them because they actually contain lists. Some of these lists are kind of small, some of them can be pretty large, and some of them can actually have lists inside of those lists. So it goes to show you that there are a lot of different events you can have. And to put one in an object to make your own event, we simply click on this button, click on the event you want, choose if you want GML code or GML visual, and click OK. And here is the event. The create event is where your code runs the very first time the object is created. In this case, I have this object placed in this room. And so in the create event, anything we place inside of here will get run as soon as the game begins because that's when this object is created. Most commonly, you will want to be assigning variables and creating them inside of this event. The destroy event is an event that takes place one time in an object's life cycle. It is triggered when you destroy an object and it can be a great place to update the score of the player, to create a particle system like an explosion, or even respawn the object if it's an enemy in another section of the room. The step event in Game Maker is an event that is running every single frame of your game. A and frame are... is that single image that when put together many times over, makes up the moving image of your game, or movie, or whatever you're looking at on a screen. In Game Maker, games run at 60 frames per second, or FPS, which means the step event is going to run every single one of those frames, so you can accept input, check for collisions, and update things like the health and the score inside of your game. The alarm event in Game Maker is kind of unique. If you go to add an alarm, you'll see that there are 12 different alarms you can set. The alarm event is just like an alarm you would set on your phone. You set it for a specific time, and when that time goes off, the alarm will trigger. In Game Maker, however, you can actually have code in the alarm event, so when it triggers, something will happen. Now, an alarm will do nothing on its own, 
and it doesn't start on its own until you call it. And so to use an alarm, we need to use a specific action block or code, in this case, set alarm countdown. We can choose from any of the alarms we have and set how long until the alarm triggers. In this case, I'll set it to 60. This is in frames. Most games run at 60 frames per second, so this will be one second after this object is created, this alarm will trigger. Let's go into the alarm, and I'll use the set speed action block to begin moving this object to the right. So in the room, I have this object, and one second after the game begins running, it will begin moving. And there you go. So you have to have code in the alarm to run, you choose how long it goes for, and then the code will trigger inside of that alarm. The Draw event in GameMaker has a few things that you should know about. First, it is where you will be drawing anything inside of GameMaker. So, text, images, health bars, you name it, the Draw event is where you must put it. There are action blocks and functions, like Draw Value, that allow you to draw text on the screen, but if you don't use these inside of the draw event, they will not work. Secondly, there are many events under draw. We can look at draw, draw GUI, and then all the way from draw begin to draw GUI end, pre-draw, window resize, and so on. The only ones you need to know to get started are gonna be draw and draw GUI. And the difference between these two is important. First, when you add a draw event, you are telling GameMaker that this object's drawing properties are now going to be handled by you, the programmer, and not by the object itself. So in my room, I have this object right here, and this object has a draw event. So running this, you would expect to see the object, but it is not visible. And that is because there is a special action block or function called draw self. This returns the object to drawing itself inside of the room, just like you would expect. So if we run this project again, we'll now see this object in the room. This only applies to the draw event, not to the draw GUI. To illustrate the difference between the draw and the draw GUI event, take a look at this gameplay from the Heroes Trail project. The text you can see is done with the draw event, and it draws the text into the room at those exact coordinates. But now notice how the player can leave that text behind, because as they move through the world, their position changes as well. Now look at the top right and see the coins collected graphic. That is drawn through the draw GUI event, and it is drawn relative to the display of the game, not the room size. So, Anytime you need to draw something that stays with the player, like a HUD, use the draw GUI event. And anytime you want to draw something in the world, use the draw event. The mouse event has a lot of sub-events that we can explore. The main thing that you need to know is the difference between down, pressed, and released. So, I have a left down, a left pressed, and a left released event and I have a show debug message inside of each one. So let's run the game and look at what happens when I actually press the left mouse button. All right, all of those messages came up in the output, so let's explore them right here. In the left down, I have it saying holding down the left key. In the left pressed, it says I pressed the left key, and in the released, I have released the left key. You'll notice that the very first one is pressed left key, and it only occurs one time. And that is what the event does. Whether it's left, right, or middle mouse button, if you have a mouse press, it will occur one time when that is pressed. The down event will occur as long as the mouse is being held down. And then the released happens when the mouse is released and it only happens one time just like the pressed and between those three you can check for any kind of input that the player might have using the mouse buttons underneath mouse you've got left right and middle for down pressed and released 
You also have a special one for no mouse input. You have something for if the mouse enters or leaves, if the mouse wheel goes up or down. And all of these events happen on the object themselves. What that means is I have to actually click on the object in my room and do one of these or go into that object for these events to take place. But there are times that you want the mouse to just work anywhere you click it. And that's where this global mouse event comes in. Under the global, you've got left, right, middle, and you have the down, pressed, and released. But they all say global. And that's because a global event will happen no matter where we click in the game. So if I add this show debug message and I run it again, if I click anywhere, it is now going to show that message and it does not have to be clicked on that object. The key events are for accepting input from the keyboard. And there are a lot of sub events under here, but they all work the same way. There are three distinctions to know about key down, key pressed, and key up. Under each of these are the same sub events for the arrow keys, special keys, and then things like the keypad, digits, which are numbers, the letters on the keyboard, the function keys you can have, and a few others like the backspace, tab, escape, etc. The key down, pressed, and up are three separate events with all of those inside of there. So let's talk about the difference between down, press, and up. The first one is the pressed event. This one will occur when the key is pressed for the very first time and it will only happen once. I have this event with a debug message showing and it says pressed left. The key down event will trigger as long as you're holding that key down and this message says I am holding left. So we'll see this one actually show up a lot. And the last one is the key up, which will trigger one time when the key is released and this message says released. The pictures on the events try to also show this. The key down just shows the keyboard. So as long as the key is being held, it triggers. The key press has the arrow coming down and the key up has the arrow coming up. So let's run this project and I will press and hold the left arrow key for just a second. And here we are. We've got pressed left occurs first. Then we have holding left for as long as I held that key down and it runs and checks every single frame of the game. So I only held it down for a quarter of a second, maybe a half a second here, and this is how many times it checked that. And then finally, release left occurred, and that is when I let go of the key. So those are the kinds of key press events that you've got. You can check for any kind of key on the keyboard, and you can check for them with all three different kinds, down, released, and pressed. The collision event allows you to detect collision between objects. Now, when you go to collision, if you don't have very many objects, you actually won't see very much at all because collision will only show you things that you can collide with. In this case, I have two objects in this project, object one, which is this object, and object two, which is a, another square. Now you can collide with yourself, or you can check for a collision with any other object. And when you add in this event, here is how you should read it. You have a collision between this object, object one, when it collides with object two, run this code. And the actual tab at the top doesn't say collision, it just says the object name that you're colliding with. So this has a speed being set and the other one has a speed and direction being set. In the room, I've placed them at opposite ends. And if we run the project, what's going to happen is the green one will overtake the orange cube and destroy it. But it only happens when it collides with it. That's what this event right here says when the orange cube when i collide with the green cube 
I get destroyed. That's how the collision event works. Now, inside of the collision event, you also have the ability to change the other object's code. So in this case, destroy instance, if I clicked on this, I could apply it to other. So now instead of destroying myself, when I collide with a green object, I will destroy that object. And that is the basic of the collision event. One object collides with another and you can run any code you want. And you can also affect the other object in that collision by choosing other in the action block or saying other dot and then access its data from there. One section of events near the bottom is called other. This one holds all of the events that don't quite fit into another category. At the top is outside room. This event will occur when an object goes outside of a room. And you can use this to wrap this object around if you wanted it to come back on the left, if it left on the right hand side or something like that. Intersect boundary is very similar, but this event will occur as soon as an object touches the boundary of a room. You've got events for all the different views you can have, and views have to do with cameras. So when you start using those, be sure to check these events out. You have things for when the game and the room starts and ends. You have things for when animations end or update. And then you also have a path ended because you can have a path asset and you can check when it stops. You have a user event where you can actually create your own events up to 16 of them and then call them and have them trigger whenever you want. And finally is the broadcast message event. This is used in sequences and sprites. If we come over to this sprite, you'll notice that there's actually an add broadcast message button right here. And we can set a message to go out when this sprite reaches a specific frame. And the add broadcast event will actually pick up that message and then you can do something based on that information. So there are a lot of events under other, and I highly encourage you to read up on the ones that look like they might be useful. Every single event has a purpose, and just because they're under other does not mean that they're less useful. They were just a little bit harder to categorize.